start uh, with the very last session of this meeting. And uh, for the first uh, talk of this session, we have uh, Professor Harris Rosu uh, from the PPC in San Luis Potosí, who will talk about uh, the factorization method in uh, fractional quantum harmonic oscillators. everybody. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to thank Oscar and uh, Sarah for inviting me to this uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, event, which is already at, at its uh, uh, ace, I, I learned uh, edition. Um, I know Oscar since a long time ago. Uh, I think it was uh, 97, 98, so uh, a century ago. <laughs> <laughs> so um, at that time I was in uh, Leon and uh, it was I think summer time and uh, suddenly Oscar appeared in, uh, in my uh, office uh, with his uh, PhD thesis and uh, told me, look, um, uh, you, you are um, uh, an evaluator, a uh, signal of, uh, of my uh, thesis, and uh, I'm here just to give you the thesis. Uh, and uh, okay, uh, uh, I, I remember it, it was an interesting thesis. Um, I told I told him, uh, yeah, yeah, um, it uh, it looks uh, fine for me, and uh, more or less <laughs> that was everything. I didn't know when he uh, got the title, when he uh, presented his defense. You see, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, I uh, now I know what's about. Uh, the point is that you are. Uh, I, I've been uh, sort of. Um, uh, foreign, foreign uh, or outside, let's say, uh, uh, evaluator, uh, and in simple stuff they have apparently they have this kind of uh, uh, evaluation. You see? <laughs> and uh, then after about one year, uh, I met uh, Oscar in uh, Valladolid in Spain. Uh, he was already uh, postdoc there. And uh, we, we have, um, again, uh, nice times there because I've been in Valladolid and Burgos, if you remember. And um, <coughs> uh, yes, uh, his, his postdoc uh, uh, period there was very fruitful for, for him. Uh, he produced uh, nice papers. In fact, I'm, uh, I'm a fan of uh, <laughs> of uh, the papers of uh, Oscar and uh, Sarah. I, uh, I uh, read them carefully all the time. They appear in, in the archive. Uh, <coughs> and in fact, what I will present today is, um, is a byproduct of uh, reading one of his paper, papers. Uh, about, about three years ago, <coughs> um, uh, Oscar uh, and his student uh, Fernando Olivar uh, Romero. <coughs> yes, <laughs> they uh, they produced a paper on the factorization method in, uh, in this realm of uh, of uh, fractal, uh, fra fractional calculus. And of course, I, I read very very carefully this, that paper, um, <coughs> and I try to reproduce uh, some of uh, their results. And uh, the point is that um, they uh, used some numerical approximation, as uh, okay, as will be clear in, in the next uh, few minutes. <laughs> and uh, okay, we dig our, we, we digged in, and uh, we have some uh, some um, good results, analytical results, which could have some impact. Uh, in the near future. So this is <coughs> still work in progress. We, uh, however, we finalize. It's almost finalized, and um, uh, 
it's a good opportunity for me to present in this uh, uh, civil study environment uh, these brand new results. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the aims of uh, this talk um, uh, there are two aims, essentially two goals, uh, to present the generalization of the factorization method to the case of fractional differential quantum harmonic uh, oscillator, uh, more or less following uh, Oliva Romero and Rosa Ortiz. <laughs> And to solve, to fully solve, uh, to solve uh, in a complete way uh, the eigenvalue problem for the fractional uh, quantum harmonic oscillator. <coughs> for books in uh, factorization method, uh, regarding factorization method, I uh, usually recommend uh, the book of uh, Lev Berkovich. Uh, factorizations and transformations of differential equations, both nonlinear and uh, linear. Um, it's uh, it's an important book. Uh, can be downloaded downloaded from from the internet. Um, the point is that it is a Russian book. It is in Russian. So, uh, but it's not so uh, um, frustrating because there are a lot of formulas and the mathematicians usually uh, okay, um, understand uh, what's going on. Yeah. Um, the second book is uh, the book of Shihai Dong, Factorization Method in Quantum Mechanics. It is a good book, again, a Springer book. Uh, so the book of um, Berkovich is from 2002. The book of Shihai Dong is a Springer book, 2007. <laughs> Shihai Dong actually is here in uh, IBM, yeah? I see. <coughs> uh, this is, these are the covers of, of, of these two books. So uh, you can see there. Uh, the book of Berkovich is, in, uh, is published by a Russian company, uh, uh, book company in uh, St. Petersburg and uh, the book of Shihai Dong. <clears throat> okay, so the quantum harmonic oscillator is a basic uh, eigenvalue problem in quantum mechanics. Um, um, So, uh, let me see. Okay. so we have uh, the eigenvalue problem for this um, Hamiltonian, which is a quadratic form, uh, in quadratic form. Um, if we uh, take E0, uh, we put E0 to 0, then we have a, a homogeneous, homogeneous equation of this kind, yeah? for the eigen, uh, for the uh, eigen mode, the zero eigen mode. Uh, I mean, uh, the ground state in quantum mechanics and uh, zero mode in uh, quantum mechanics. <coughs> uh, what, what, means, uh, what does mean uh, factorization of a differential operator? Just um, writing it as a product of uh, two operators of, uh, of uh, less uh, differential order. So, uh, Usually, uh, the standard factorization in uh, the case of the quadratic uh, Hamiltonian is of this kind. So, in, uh, in the addition form and in the multiplicative form. Yeah. <coughs> uh, you see here the operatorial part, and this non-operatorial non part is practically this x here is in fact a Riccati solution. Um, in the case, this is one of the simplest cases of, uh, of uh, factoring. Uh, in uh, this case, uh, in this case, uh, the fa uh, factorization energy here is practically one half. The commutator 
uh, comes out to be one. And uh, okay, um, these two factoring operators occurred uh, in the literature already in 1930, the first book on, on quantum mechanics by Dirac. <coughs> And in uh, 1931, the second book uh, in quantum mechanics by Falk in, in St. Petersburg, in Russia, again in Russia. <coughs> so this book, uh, maybe you know, it is called Principles of Quantum Mechanics, and this one, uh, it is called uh, uh, Fundamentals of Quantum Mechanics. And of course, there are already two uh, English uh, uh, so uh, these factoring operators appeared in this uh, complex conjugate form uh, just because, okay, the, the quantum mechanical momentum is practically the derivative. So uh, uh, you see here the correspondence between the two mm, uh, types of factoring operators. <coughs> so we have uh, also uh, these relationships. Um, so uh, the quadratic Hamiltonian can be uh, uh, can be written in this way: a1, a2 plus one half, or a2, a1 minus one half. Uh, and these are, in uh, some sense, so this uh, this ex these expressions here are practically the partner uh, Hamiltonians in uh, supersymmetric quantum mechanics. They are very, uh, they are uh, practically identical up to this factorization energy, which is actually the vacuum uh, 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 in the case of quantum fields. You see, <coughs> here we have a, a1, a2 plus one half. So it's the standard, uh, it's uh, a, a uh, non-dimensional here. Uh, so it's the standard h bar, h bar omega over two, uh, the standard um, uh, vacuum energy. Yeah? Uh, instead here <coughs> we have a two a one minus one half. So uh, this is why usually I call uh, this kind of reverse factorization uh, sort of uh, fermionic uh, partner, just because the vacuum energy is minus one half. So uh, that's the main difference between the bosoni case, which is the way we know about uh, harmonic oscillator, and uh, this fermionic harmonic oscillator. <coughs> uh, one can get this type of relationships, uh, which are intertwining uh, uh, type. And uh, using them, uh, one, can, one can solve immediately in an algebraic way, uh, so uh, just very, very simple method, the eigenvalue problem. <laughs> just because we have these facts here. Uh, once you have psi at lambda, then a1 uh, psi is at lambda plus one, and a2, which is just the operator in the standard vectorization at, at, the, at the right, uh, it is uh, lambda minus one. The annihilation of it. Uh, in, um, in this algebraic method, uh, one gets the ground state eigenfunction from the from the kernel equation uh, of the annihilation operator. So uh, immediately you have the uh, you have the ground state here, the Gaussian. <coughs> Uh, and <coughs> by uh, repeated application uh, of um, uh, the creation operator, or well, if you want the, the factoring operator on the, on the right, on the, on the left, uh, you just get uh, psi n for for any for, for any lambda n, yeah, and you have here the Hermite polynomials. <coughs> so this is a basic example uh, should be known by all the all the students uh, in physics and doing quantum mechanics. <coughs> More generally, uh, so for any quantum mechanical problem, uh, one-dimensional problem, uh, you can write again these factoring operators. 
you know that uh, the non-operatorial parties are the Ricati, some Ricati solution, and in a multiplicative way you can write it this way. <coughs> and uh, uh, the point is, in this case, you obtain the factoring energy, uh, practically a function, also the commutator is a function, so uh, this uh, doesn't work quite well uh, for quantum, mechan in quantum mechanics. Uh, and this is why Inverdi uh, Hall uh, developed uh, uh, related methods related to, uh, connected to the factorization, to the factorization method. <coughs> uh, the paper of Inverdi Hall is 1950. Already 1950, practically, um, the, factoring, uh, the factorization method has been uh, completely uh, has been shown to be um, completely uh, implemented in quantum mechanics. <coughs> now, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, passing now to uh, the fractional calculus, I just present some. Uh, some um, uh, chronology here. So uh, we all know about the letter of L'Hopital to Leibniz in uh, 1695. Uh, so it's already more than three centuries ago. Uh, mm, put in this uh, clever question to Leibniz. We know also about the, the answer of Leibniz. But the first published uh, text is uh, exactly 200 years ago uh, in, um, okay, it's a uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a, um, how do you call it, a textbook of Lacroix. Uh, if you are interested, uh, the first two volumes, they are in the internet again, but uh, this, um, these two pages, regarding the fractional derivatives are in the third volume and the third volume is, is not in the internet. <laughs> uh, practically, uh, in those two pages, uh, Lacram proposed, or, yeah, proposed uh, a result for the half derivative. The half derivative, uh, in, in, uh, according to him, is practically this x to one half. And uh, the modern period can be considered to be initiated with the book of uh, Orham and Spanier in uh, 1974. Uh, and this, at uh, least uh, according to, um, to a historical review made by, uh, by, by Ross. <clears throat> I mean, this timeline is, is not mine, I'm just presenting you uh, from the book of, from the, um, Review of Ross. <clears throat> okay. Regarding the space fractional showing equation, um, the first who uh, who wrote such uh, such an uh, equation was uh, was Leskin, uh, Nick Leskin, or Nikolai Leskin. <laughs> Uh, so he um, he proposed this kind of uh, equation. Uh, you see here already the, the fractional derivative. He even h power uh, he put uh, power here, and this uh, d alpha, d alpha is a scale constant which is a sort of a diffusion constant, uh, let's say. And uh, the form of the oscillator potential was uh, this type, so modulus of x to beta, so only for beta equal to 2 was uh, actually the, the oscillator, this is a coupling cost. Um, so in some sense, uh, Leskin, Leskin's showing equation is a two-parameter equation, alpha and beta. This levy, this uh, alpha is practically what in mathematics is called the levy stability index, I will come on. Next, uh, next slide. Uh, and uh, it, it is usually taken between one and two. Um, uh, this, uh, 
this derivative is practically the risk, and in his case, risk fractional derivative of order alpha. Um, and okay, uh, in the case alpha equal two, you pass through the standard uh, Schrodinger equation. Um, what about uh, this alpha, this Levy stability, this Levy stability uh, 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 index? So uh, these are uh, works, fundamental works by Paul Levy and uh, and Hinchin in in, uh, in 1930s. Uh, so uh, they were um, uh, the, the the motivation was to look for um, um, for um, distributions, probability distributions, which have the, the fundamental property of uh, the Gaussian uh, distribution. Namely, that sums of, uh, uh, as you see here, identically and uh, independent distributed random variables belongs to the same kind of distribution. This is well known as the fundamental property of the Gaussian. Uh, distribution. <laughs> so uh, the main problem at that time was if there are any other distributions having this this uh, important property. Um, so uh, they concluded that for uh, alpha equal two, so we have the normal Gaussian distributions having such property, of course. For alpha equal one, we have the Cauchy distributions or. Cauchy distribution or the Lorentz distribution. Um, alpha smaller than two, uh, for alpha smaller than two, all Levy distributions are have an undefined variance. This is still not very cumbersome for quantum mechanics, but for alpha uh, smaller than one, uh, the Levy distributions have uh, undefined mean, which is not acceptable, of course, for quantum mechanics, just because in quantum mechanics, we have uh, 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 yeah is that essentially working with uh, fractional differential equations in in the context of quantum mechanics um, uh, uh, in the intuitive way is is a way of speaking about non locality yeah so it's uh, it's another way of speaking about non locality in quantum mechanics. <clears throat> so, uh, what about quantum risk uh, uh, derivative? Oh, sorry. Um, this derivative uh, is a pseudo differential uh, uh, operator. Um, has been it, it, it has been introduced by uh, by by Ries in uh, 1949. Uh, it looks like that. Uh, so it is defined uh, in this way, this uh, pseudo uh, pseudo operator. Uh, and here, uh, this phi is practically the Fourier transform of the of the wave function of this psi here. Uh, and the point is, for alpha equal to one obtains the ordinary second order derivative again, uh, and in 3D uh, one uh, gets the ordinary Laplacian. Uh, this was the main focus, the, the main um, motivation of uh, of uh, Ries uh, in his paper. It's a long paper looking for uh, uh, generalization of the Laplacian, and he found this kind of pseudo differential generalization. Uh, okay, um, about Leskin, Leskin's papers, um, he, uh, as I said, he used this uh, the, the, the um, oscillator potential in uh, in this form, uh, and he got semi-classically. So uh, it was only the the eigenspectrum, not uh, the eigenfunctions. Uh, it's just uh, the. the, the Integral over a period of the quantum momentum, okay, defined in, in a fractional way. Uh, so he obtained this formula. Um, here is a beta function. Uh, it's a two-parameter form formula. We have here the the, uh, the 
a distant spectrum of uh, the oscillator in the case when alpha equal beta equal uh, uh, two. Yeah. Uh, so only, only in this case we have an, uh, the equidistant spectrum corresponding to the harmonic oscillator. And with Stefan Mankas, we uh, we brought it actually. Uh, Leskin, for example, doesn't have these plots. Uh, um, this uh, these eigenvalues, uh, semi-classical eigenvalues, and uh, indeed, indeed, we can uh, we can. Um, We, we, we've seen that in the case beta equal 2, which is uh, the, the standard harmonic oscillator, um, for alpha equal 2, uh, these lines here, which have a certain uh, curvature, but in this case, uh, at, uh, at precisely at 2, we have uh, an equidistant spectrum. <clears throat> Uh, it has a discrete spectrum. Uh, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll show because I, uh, we claim that we solve completely. Because the fractional operator is not the differential; it is enough smoothness. Yeah, yeah, but, but in, uh, in uh, the, the trick is uh, just um, go into the Fourier space Fourier by, by a certain kind of Fourier transform. And there you have an ordinary differential equation. So you solve there because it's just ordinary differential equation, and you go back by inverse Fourier transform. transform. This is what we did actually. Uh, so um, <clears throat> so we worked in this case um, with beta equal two uh, because here we wanted to, um, in some sense, to check also some results of uh, of, uh, of Oscar. Fernando. Um, uh, so so uh, we worked on only with this kind of uh, fractional differential equation. Yeah? And what we did is precisely what I commented. We passed to uh, the K space, uh, to the momentum representation, so to speak. We uh, used the factorization method in the K space. Uh, and finding there the, the phi zero of k, so the, ground, the, the zero mode of the ground state uh, uh, eigenfunction there. And uh, then going back to, uh, to find the psi zero of, of x. So that, that was the, the, the procedure. Um, so let me uh, tell some words about uh, the vectorization in this case. It's very similar to what has been done, uh, what, what has been presented in the in the ordinary calculus. Yeah. So we have the factorization of energy, a sort of factorization in energy, uh, which can be this time either a number or a fractional differential operator. This uh, this actually uh, has been uh, stated by uh, by Oscar and Fernando. <coughs> And uh, you can try various kinds of uh, factoring operators. Uh, they proposed this one. Uh, it's one of the simplest. Could be other, other types. And we, actually, we try others. But uh, in this case, so when you make the, um, the product, you get this kind of operator. So look here. Uh, this uh, intermediate. Uh, uh, derivative is introduced in this way. For alpha equal 2, this intermediate derivative disappears uh, and you end up with the standard uh, quantum harmonic oscillator. Uh, so this is a kind of, uh, it's uh, analogous to the um, uh, first order derivative in the standard calculus, so it's a sort of friction or dissip dissipation. <coughs> So if you just match uh, the, the, um, uh, the operators, you get that uh, the factorization energy is uh, precisely this uh, intermediate derivative. 
So uh, for alpha equal to, we end up with just uh, one and uh, with the um, standard operator, uh, factor in operators. Uh, in the case of alpha, alpha different of two, we have uh, this dissipation in some sense. Uh, introduced by, by hand, by, by <laughs> the way of uh, doing the, the cal calculation. <clears throat> so, uh, as I said, we are now in the K space uh, and we um, uh, So in, in, uh, in the factorization method, uh, you get the, the um, eigenfunction of the ground state from the annihilation operator, which is here, this, this A, capital A. Um, but of course, uh, this can be, cannot be solved in, in uh, X space. So uh, we pass to the K space, and uh, I will show actually the calculus because it's a very simple calculus. Uh, we, we, uh, the, the final result is this type of uh, function. It's a Gaussian-like function for alpha equal to is practically the Gaussian. Uh, then you go to the eigenvalue problem just to get the, the, the eigenvalue, the ground state eigenvalue. It's uh, K dependent. Uh, it's not a uh, constant, but for alpha equal to, again, it's a constant. Uh, and because alpha is between one and two, uh, I call this, I call this sub-Gaussian functions, because you have always, uh, this is not uh, quite uh, true, never. And uh, I, will, I will show more next. <coughs> um, how we did the, uh, these calculations, and this is uh, uh, a slightly different way uh, with respect to, to Oscar and, uh, and Bernardo. Um, we use, of course, the Fourier uh, transform of, uh, of psi zero. It's here. Uh, OK, it's plus here. That doesn't matter too much. We, um, for the der derivative of uh, phi zero k, uh, with respect to K, we have this, uh, in practically it's I, Fourier transform of X, X of psi zero, as you can see. But, so, um, <laughs> and this is uh, the very important uh, uh, trick uh, which uh, helped us to uh, perform the calculations uh, and not go into numerical uh, results. Uh, and this we have found in a very recent paper of um, of uh, Berman and uh, Moisev in Te Technion. It's a paper, a Fisre Bay paper, published at the, at the end of, uh, of the last year on uh, the eigenvalue problem for the for the square square well potential. So <laughs> it is only square well potential which has been uh, completely solved uh, in the fractional calculus up, up to now. Um, so uh, uh, we used uh, not the risk derivative precisely, but what is called the risk valor derivative. What does it mean? It means that when you are performing your Fourier transform over the, this pseudo differential operator, you actually use uh, this kind of, um, you have this result where you introduce this, uh, it is called a symbol in, uh, in Fourier transform. Uh, we use this uh, uh, symbol with, uh, with, with minus sign. This is the, the only difference with respect to the standard uh, risk calculation. So, and this symbol is practically this expression here, in this case, for, for the uh, risk valor derivative, uh, or pseudo -dif differential operator. You have the model scale alpha. You have uh, this theta, which is an asymmetry index. It is also called skewness, in, uh, in probably. <clears throat> and theta should be in this interval. You, uh, and, uh, so, um, uh, moreover, theta uh, and alpha, in fact, even uh, also uh, Fernando showed some uh, some domains, and uh, according to his 
equations, fractional differential equations. Yeah. So uh, this theta uh, and alpha should be in this uh, uh, diamond here. It is called Takayasu Feller diamond diagram. Uh, Takayasu wrote a small book, but I um, on uh, fractal fractal physics, and apparently he introduced this kind of uh, domain. So, uh, how much time do I have? Because I have, um, I, re I reach only about 40%. Okay, thank you. So, uh, the, the, how to find phi zero? Here is the simple calculation. Um, of course, in uh, X space, um, you would have uh, the kernel here, the fractional kernel. Uh, which means uh, this kind of equation. Uh, you pass to the k-space, but in the way I, uh, I uh, explained in the previous uh, slide. So you apply the Fourier transform to, uh, to the non-fractional non part, but you apply this, uh, this um, asymmetric Fourier transform to the fractional part. Uh, you get this. This equation, which is practically the kernel equation in the k-space, uh, and then uh, so uh, from here, um, neglecting the minus sign, you have a k. It's just uh, this one, the symbol for alpha over two, and uh, the derivative. <coughs> so b k, the creation operator would be this one. Now you apply, uh, you just integrate uh, this kind of equation. So, uh, and here is for k uh, bigger than zero, you have this kind of integration, and you pick up theta equal one. Then uh, you just get uh, what I said before, this sub quotient. This is in the positive semi-axis. In the negative semi-axis, you uh, just uh, make uh, okay, just to, to not have uh, not to have uh, problems. You define k uh, equal minus p, uh, and then you work with with uh, p. Actually, uh, you have this kind of uh, relationships, and again for theta equal one, you can perform the calculation. You obtain this. So the final result in the full axis. Full, uh, full line, uh, K line, uh, is practically this uh, some, some, some Gaussian. <coughs> so, uh, I make an important remark here. You have a fractional uh, uh, differential equation in the X space. You pass to the K represent representation and you just obtain an ordinary differential equation. And so you are <laughs> more um, you are sure that uh, here you cannot uh, have wrong results in some sense. So look here, uh, you have uh, you have uh, this term corresponding, uh, which is practically the ordinary de derivative, second derivative, and this this one and this one here can be interpreted interpreted as uh, the components of of your Schrodinger potential in the k space. So, uh, just uh, a sum or a difference, if you want, of two powers. That's the, the uh, potential in the k-space. Uh, so you have here the how it looks. For alpha equal two, it's just the parabolic uh, uh, harmonic uh, potential. And for other values uh, in the interval, interval, you have, of course, you have uh, singular potentials. You have singular potentials at the origin. They look like, like that. Nevertheless, you have uh, um, perfectly uh, acceptable ground state, which is the sub, sub Gaussian. Um, so uh, uh, this is uh, um, a very important finding, in my opinion. Uh, so. Um, we uh, plotted this uh, phi zero uh, uh, of k, this ground state. Uh, you see, for alpha, for alpha equal two, is the blue, blue color. 
it's just the Gaussian, the standard Gaussian. And the other ones, uh, red color and the green color, they are the sub Gaussians. And this is why I call them, once I've seen the, 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 the plot, uh, I, I, I uh, propose this, uh, uh, this uh, terminology, sub Gaussians, because you see in the main part of the peak, uh, the Gaussian peak, they are below the standard Gaussian, and then you have uh, the heavy tails, so to say. So there is a transition to heavy tails here. Uh, we performed the inverse Fourier transform. I mean, Mathematica performed this. And this is how, uh, and surprisingly, we obtained uh, analytic results. So um, uh, by inverse Fourier transform, we got this psi zero for the um, fractional differential equation. And they look, look like that. You see, again, they have this bell shape uh, form. Uh, and we've been uh, amazed to see that Mathematica provided, uh, OK, uh, Stefan has Mathematica version 12, and he has their very good computing uh, stuff. Uh, so uh, these, uh, these uh, sub Gaussians, uh, they look bell shaped. Uh, uh, but uh, they are expressed in terms of um, generalized hypergeometric uh, functions. Uh, so uh, these are some of our conclusions here. Um, uh, you, you see, there are there are small differences, but they are in the in the exponent uh, with respect to the standard Gaussian. Uh, so. Uh, Okay, this is one remark. The inverse Fourier transform provides uh, analytic results, um, and they can be expressed in terms of uh, generalized hypergeometric functions. What does it mean? Uh, I have written here just one of them. So you practically, for example, in the case of a three halves, uh, your sub Gaussian looks like that. Uh, and it can be uh, from, from Mathematica, we, we obtain that it can be expressed as a superposition of seven uh, hypergeometric functions uh, with uh, the variable, uh, okay, this, uh, this power here. Uh, and so you have the, this generalized hypergeometric functions times x to 2m, e of, and okay, some coefficients here. Uh, this, for, for example, uh, for uh, m equals zero, you have this f, f zero here. It has uh, six um, hypergeometric uh, uh, parameters in the in the nominator in the numerator, uh, and you have uh, eleven hypergeometric parameters in the denominator. And you see there is a certain pattern here. It's uh, 11 plus 7, which is related to this 7 here. Uh, and uh, suddenly you have, a, you have a hole here. But uh, OK, uh, there is a clear sequence. And also here you have a, a hole, uh, more or less about half of the sequence. Um, so what we uh, did next is just to get the first excited state, applying this uh, creation operator in the k space, of course, we got this. Uh, OK, the, the, the eigenvalue can be calculated easily. Looks like that. So this is a uh, result already reported by, by Oscar and Fernando. Um, again, uh, here we notice this uh, for alpha equal 2, you just get uh, the standard result. Uh, and uh, here you can see that this looks like sort of centrifugal barrier in some sense. Um, um, what we did was again to plot to see what's uh, what's about. Uh, we plot the, ima uh, the imaginary part because it's a pure imaginary uh, function, imaginary function uh, for t1. It looks like that for by, by Fourier transform. The inverse Fourier transform, we get to practically the, uh, okay, more or less looking like the first excited state of uh, the, the harmonic oscillator, standard harmonic oscillator. Um, this is the second excited state. Uh, again, 
working with a creation operator. Uh, uh, in the case space, I repeat, it's just a standard ODE. Okay. Um, the eigenvalue, so to speak, eigenvalue, because it depends on K, again, has this centrifugal part in some sense. Uh, we plot it again. Um, and of course, uh, in the K space, you have, uh, for alpha equal 2, you have um, the regular, uh, regular function. All the other functions are, uh, are singular at the origin. As I told, only the ground state uh, eigenfunction is practically a regular fun function. You have, um, you have um, a singular potential uh, with a uh, ground state eigenfunction uh, regular. It's like a delta function but potential. Again, in, in the co course of quantum mechanics, if you do the the eigenvalue problem for delta potential, you just want, you have just one single state, uh, bound state, and uh, it's just uh, sort of beacon. Yeah. So here is more or less the same. Uh, you have um, you have a singular potential. The ground state is uh, stable, is regular. All the other ones are singular of the origin. Uh, when we, but when you proceed with the inverse Fourier transform, you, you can get uh, more or less regular functions. And this is for the uh, uh, fractional uh, equation. These are the eigenenergies. These eigenenergies create the eigenenergies, but in the k space, so with this k dependence, they look very strange for us. For, um, uh, again, uh, of course, in the case alpha equal 2, you have, uh, okay, one half that you know, and uh, three halves, and so on. Uh, but all the others are mm, just nonsense in some sense. Um, mm, what we did more, uh, in actually, in, uh, last week, um, uh, so uh, since it's an ordinary ODE, uh, it's a common ODE in the case space, so we, uh, We've seen that we can have such kind of formula, just like in the ordinary space. Uh, so uh, we introduced this uh, risk feller Hermit poly polynomials. You see, they uh, they are of this type. Um, here are the first four. Uh, this is the fifth one. Uh, so uh, we noticed here that if we write uh, the coefficients certain powers here, uh, subsequent powers as P1 of alpha, which is one here, one here, P2, and so on. This P1, P2, and uh, P4 for the H5, uh, and this one's here. And uh, we could, um, okay, uh, by, we could uh, obtain the, uh, the expression for arbitrary n. It looks, it looks like that. And here are, here they are. <clears throat> Again, Mathematica is an uh, uh, excellent tool, an excellent tool because we can see what's about. Uh, uh, and it's better to start here. For alpha equal 2, you see this one here is practically H5. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, roots, 5 uh, nodes. Um, um, this one, I think, this one here is uh, one, two, uh, three, four. It's H, H four, yeah, and so on. So it's just a regular. It's a, just a standard um, Hermit uh, polynomials. But when you go to um, sub Gaussian values, uh, for example, um, uh, H five, it's here. You have uh, one, two, you have the singularity, one, two, three, four. So you have uh, four nodes and the singularity. So this is the difference. Uh, and the difference uh, get more, uh, more uh, 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 gre uh, be becomes greater when you go to alpha equal one. Uh, so uh, in general, you have uh, less number of uh, nodes plus uh, the 
la singularité. Um, for example, in the case uh, three halves, uh, this uh, this uh, fractional uh, Hermit operators look, look uh, polynomials look, look like that. And okay, to be compared with uh, the standard ones, you see, for example, here you have. Uh, I don't understand. This is the eigenfunction of the fractional. These are mm, okay. These are the the polynomial part of the uh, of the, of the um, yeah of the eigenstates. Uh, the first excited state here. Oh, here. This would be for the first excited state uh, in the sig half case. The second excited state. All all of them multiplied by uh, the subvolution. The point is that in some sense they are um, still bound states with with the singularity of the origin, of course, all these ex excited states. I mean, they are in this. Uh, parabolic uh, potential with the singularity of the origin. And they are there. It, it's exactly the picture of uh, the harmonic standard harmonic oscillator, but uh, with the singularity of uh, the origin for the potential. And uh, these are also singular states. Uh, all, all the excited states are singular states uh, 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 the origin, except the ground state. So we, um, we have this kind of Rodriguez formula. Uh, we have checked it carefully uh, mm, with sub Gaussians instead of uh, the Gaussian. Yeah. Um, and uh, and what else? One can do, of course, factorization with two, sub two Levy indi uh, indices. You see, the, the, let's say um, I don't know how. But this is a sort of uh, annihilation operator. This is a, the creation operator. Oh, okay, ju I'm just. I have, can I have one minute more? So uh, in this case, we put uh, so this condition uh, delta plus gamma to be alpha. So um, we factorize, and and now this factorization operator looks like that. It's a bit more complicated. Uh, for delta equal gamma. Uh, equal alpha, then we have the, 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 the previous case, uh, because this is zero. So now, actually, we introduced um, one more term, so to say, in the, in the dissipation. It's this one here. Um, we can do a sort of a supersymmetric quantum mechanics if you want. If you want, just revert in the factorization, and then the difference is that you have a minus sign here. So uh, this is the same as before. So it looks like uh, this uh, game of uh, uh, having one uh, one uh, Hamiltonian uh, as uh, having dissipation and the partner Hamiltonian as having a gain term. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we are working on this uh, on this. Uh, type of vectorization because we reproduce practically all these uh, intertwining type uh, results which are actually in the, in the paper of Mernick. So the conclusions uh, are that the vectorization method mm, can be applied to the fractional calculus but you should uh, consider that the vectorization energy is practically could be a a pseudo differential operator, and okay, uh, we introduced these sub Gaussian functions, and uh, in terms of the generalized hypergeometric functions, they are uh, we found out that they are practically uh, superposition of generalized hypergeometric functions, and as a byproduct, we also introduced this kind of uh, uh, risk or Hermit polynomials. So um, the references are practically these ones, the book of uh, Allheim and Spanier, 
uh, Leskin's papers. There is another paper as well here. But, uh, okay. uh, this, all, this is also an interesting paper. The paper of Oscar and uh, Fernando is here. And um, okay. And the paper of uh, these are just some. Okay. Because this can be generalized even more. Uh, here for for uh, uh, anharmonic oscillators. Okay, thank you. Let's. It's a way of introducing non-locality in uh, physics. Um, so uh, whenever you have, uh, um, okay, the me this matter of non-locality, or you think about non-locality, you can uh, uh, you can uh, think also about fractional characters. Uh, but uh, the, the, uh, in my case, the the, um, the lesson I, I have from uh, these uh, cal calculations is that uh, you can perform them up to the end in some sense only if you pass them to some uh, ordinary differential equations. And then... So the first uh, very near glance uh, on the, this problem, so uh, the fractional, uh, fractional harmonic oscillator is a dual operator for the Schrodinger operator with the some uh, potential with yeah, some yeah. potential. <laughs> right. So this is potential not very bad, so there is a some singularity difficult to catch the singularity at the points. Right. So this, there is a some way they use this and obtain the some results. The results about <laughs> this spectrum which you Explain me follow for this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe there is uh, some calculation, so it is not so very bad the point. So in this case, one can obtain the something that's important, the eigenvalues, the risk come back. Maybe this is very. Yeah, yeah, so uh, the point is uh, actually we, we are thinking also about um, potentials with three, with three powers we can manage to, <laughs> to, to perform the calculations up to the end. Uh, again, they, they have the same structure with some singularity, and, uh, but you have some uh, analytic res results and I love analytic results to see. Thank you. 